Welcome to the Zion Schoolhouse in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. My name is Howard Paul Shore. Today is Wednesday, February the 7th, 2018. And I have Maggie with me. Hi. Maggie, thank you for inviting me right before my birthday, which is Tuesday, February the 13th. This is a lovely present that the City of Toronto has given me. And I say thank you very much. I'm so honored to be here. Oh, well, let's go inside. We're let's, a little bit warm. Let's go. It is cold. Yeah, you're right. Here we go. As we say, ladies first. Oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> and that's quite appropriate because this is the girls' entrance. This is where the girls would come into the schoolhouse, and I do always let them in first. There we go. <laughs> to show what uh, school life was like around 1910, but in fact the school was built in 1869. So we do a role-playing program, the children come in and while they're here, they're pretending to be the real students from that time, so the name tags you see on the desks are the names of real students, and that's who, if you were sitting in this desk, it would be Betty Scrace for the day, and you've got sisters on this side and brothers on the other side of the classroom. Great. Did they write with the, uh, the pens or the feathers in those days? We're a little bit past that technology okay. uh, onto the steel nib pen. So it has a wooden pen holder and then a steel nib. But we do do some of that with the older grades, with grade fives and up. Oh, great. Very nice. What else can we see here? All right. So, want to come, come up to the front? Why not? Well, while well, the students are here, oops. Oh, yeah. They use the slate and slate pencil. And we have a couple of reproductions as part of school books from, from that time period. So they did the kinds of lessons that they would have done then. And so used the slates and slate pencils, and then with the grade fives and up, used the pen and ink mm -hmm. as well. And we start our day by singing God Save the King. So playing the piano. And, uh, <laughs> and, so cool. and what would be what would be original here exactly? Uh, the, the desks are from the time period. A lot of the things that the kids handle a lot, like the slates, are not, but the desks are from that time. And the sort of all general structure of the building. The, the piano is a Toronto manufactured Heinzman, um, a little before 1910. And then there's a, a bit of a mix of things after that. So the things that they handle the most are the things that we use reproductions just in case they get broken. Mm -hmm. But uh, other things that uh, I get to play the piano with you, uh, it, it is an original. Right. And it still works? Yes, it does. Well, wow, that's so cool. <laughs> nice. What else can we see here? Let's check out the desk. Sure. So we got the pens. Oh, we are not. We have the steel nib pens. So these are original ones, and we use modern copies some of the time. But uh, they're like writing with a paintbrush that you have to dip them into ink, get them wet, write until the ink runs out, and then start over again. So I have a penmanship lesson on the blackboard there. You go through all those steps of learning to make slanted lines, ovals, putting them together. So now penmanship is not really taught in the schools very much, so it's kind of a novelty for the kids to even be asked to, to write with the device. Yeah. Almost like calligraphy, right? Mm. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have really good penmanship, really good writing, it would look like this. Oh, okay, that's nice. So that's the, the, the fancy stuff. But for our students, this is often an introduction to the, the tools and even just to the, to, um, joined up writing or cursive. <laughs> I'm not sure if you mentioned this, but what grade level would have been here during the time? It would have been grade one to grade eight or nine. If a teacher had the qualifications, she could teach grade nine as well. And for many of the students who went to school here, this was the end of their education. They went here till grade eight, and then at the age of 14, you could leave school, and then you would be apprenticed or, or go back to working on the farm. So it's very much a rural, neighborhood when the school was in use. That's great. I heard that they filmed some movies or TV shows. Do you can name any? No, I can't remember the name. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of Little House on the Prairie. I don't know why. <laughs> It'd be more Anna Green Gables. Okay. Yeah. And 
we, we often use that Canadian book as a touchstone for uh, what a school would be like because the, the book was written in 1908 mm -hmm. and restored to 1910. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Lucy Maud Montgomery was from Prince Edward Island, so it's a Canadian example. So. That's very nice, yes. Is there anything else that you would like to tell the people? Like, for example, what are the hours and days people come and visit? How could they come and visit this wonderful place? Yeah, so we really are focused on doing school programs, so that's a booked program experience, but for people to drop in, we'll be open on this family day on uh, next Monday, and we're open for doors open in May, the sort of special events through the year. In June, we have a big event called Suburban Steam, which is a steampunk festival, which oh, okay. takes us a bit out of the real 1910 and into a imagined, <laughs> we call it the retro, retro futuristic. Great. And here's a question. Do they ever have a day where people will come here and all dress up like in that time period? We get a lot of people come and dress up for um, Suburban Steam, but it's okay. more steampunk dress up. Okay. The kids, are, of course, are welcome to come dressed up for their school programs. Uh -huh. so. Wonderful. Well, if anybody wants to check out a very nice historical schoolhouse when you come to Toronto, Ontario, Canada, please look under the Zion Schoolhouse on Google. I'm Howard Paul Shore with Maggie. Maggie, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Come and visit. Bye-bye. Thank you.